The one thing that's still out there haunting me is something that we call the terror wasp. What do you think? Should we find out if the terror wasp ranks on the insect sting pin? Go for it. This, this could be the last one, maybe. I thought the execution wasp was going to be it. Now there's been like ah. stings in magnitude, but maybe the terror wasp is the grandiose pinnacle of the mountain. Well, I can always give you another one after that. Wait, what's after that? I'm Justin Schmidt, and I'm the architect of the Insect Sting Pain Index. Just five months ago, I sat in a room with world-renowned entomologist Justin Schmidt talking about insect stings and the crazy road we have both traveled down to bring everyone education and entertainment about some of the world's creepiest creatures. And it's here today that I sit with a heavy heart to announce that my friend, mentor, and the Yoda of Sting, Justin Schmidt, passed away February 18th, 2023. And the video we're going to bring you today is, to our knowledge, the last interview that he did on camera. I filmed this with Justin in September of 2022 after sticking my feet into a mound of harvester ants. At the time, I did not even know that he was sick. He was upbeat, he was excited, and he was thrilled to talk about the world of insects. To you, my friend Justin, wherever you are in the afterlife, chasing all sorts of bugs with nets and hopefully not getting stung too much, I hope that you are smiling down on all of us now, knowing that you inspired an entire generation and many more to come with your love for insects. Justin, on behalf of myself, everyone who loves animals, and specifically the world of entomology, thank you for all of the inspiration that you brought us as the Yoda of Sting. Today is an extra special experience. I'm getting the chance to sit down with the godfather of the Insect Sting Pain Index, the one and only Justin Schmidt. Justin, thank you so much for taking the time today to talk stings and some of the crazy stuff I've been through since I last saw you. It's my pleasure, Coyote. It's been great fun chatting with you and love these insects. I mean, nothing's better than stinging insects. Well, that's how you and I feel about it, but I have a feeling that most people out there that have been stung accidentally by things would argue differently. Now, when we first worked together, it was 2017 when I got to visit you here in your amazing office and learn a little bit about the pain, so to speak, that you have gone through in climbing up the mountain of insects. And since that time, I've gone through a few more on your list, including the worry wasp, which I will agree is very close in pain to the bullet ant, but also the giant hornet and the executioner wasp. So you're, which, you're ahead of me. Uh, yeah, because you've not been stung by the giant hornet or the X wasp, right? That's right. Neither one of those. I, I've run into both of them, but I haven't been stung by them. Okay. You know, why, I, I, why did you avoid the sting? Well, with the hornets, that was before I had made the sting index. Gotcha. And I was, I was at that point looking at the chemistry and biochemistry of the venom. So I thought, well, you know, why do I need to get stung? What I need to do is find out what, what makes this venom work. Yeah. And so I, I was in Japan at the time, and the interesting thing was the Japanese are wonderful hosts, and they don't want to get their, their guests stung up. So they had two faculty members and three students. They suited me up in a suit of armor. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. And, and I had this little short-handled, six-inch handled net, which I would catch them. So I'd you like and, went into a yeah, swarm of them? <gasps> I'd go in and breathe on them, and then I'd run back, and then shh, catch them, fold up the net, chuck it in an ice chest, and they'd hand me another net, and we had a whole bunch of nets. So they kind of made you the guinea pig to go into the nest to catch exactly. the hornets. Exactly. But what they did was, behind me were a couple of students with like 10-foot insect nets, and a couple of faculty up in the front, and between the whole team of us, nobody got stung, which in hindsight, I think, rats. I get asked all the time, everybody says, you know, with this big hornet fiasco in British Columbia and right. Washington, everybody says, how much do they hurt? And I say, well, I predicted it'd be a three. Mm -hmm. I said, I, ha I don't actually know and I want something more definitive. So then I usually say, well, send me over to Japan and pay me on a sabbatical for a three or four day trip and we'll get stung. Yeah. And as soon as they think about, oh, it's going to cost something, that's the end of that. Ah, I gotcha. Well, I did take it that step further. And I love this idea that you're talking about of being in a suit of armor to go into one of the nests because we actually have that concept in development now. But when it comes to the sting of the giant hornet, I will tell you the impact of that stinger, the gauge and size of it 
is Damn. like a hot needle going into your skin. Oh, yeah. it, is, it is one of the worst pain experiences I've had. And as a singular sting, it is right there, pretty much equivalent, in my opinion, with the execution wasp. And I'd say without question, it is at a four on the insect sting. Well, that, that could be. They, they certainly are like 10 times bigger than, say, our yellow jacket or mm -hmm. bald-faced hornet. And I don't know if it has to do with a certain amount of venom that is yielded from a sting, but there are a few insects, executioner wasp included, which we'll move into here in a second, that I do feel have slight necrotic properties to the venom, which was very different than a lot of the other stings I took, like the velvet ant, tarantula lock, and bullet ant. Yeah, they, I noticed they don't that do effect. any of that. Mm -hmm. Now, when we were climbing up your index, which I have to note, there would be no Coyote Peterson climbing up the insect sting pain index without the work that Justin did in advance in his amazing book, The Sting of the Wild, which brought so much inspiration to our work. With the giant hornet and the executioner wasp, you know, when we released the executioner wasp episode in I think late 2018, we were like, all right, we've climbed the insect sting pain index. That's gotta be it. We labeled that creature as the king of sting. You obviously are the godfather, the Yoda of stings is kind of how I look at it. And we said, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm going into sting retirement. Obviously at this point, the audience knows I have not held up to that retirement plan. I've since been stung by the cicada killer and have done a handful of other things, including backyard stings. And we have found that stings in mass, right? So now I've done sticking my hand into a box with 200 yellow jackets. And as of the filming of this interview here today, putting my feet into a swarm of harvester ants. What's your take on a single sting versus a bunch of stings? And have you ever gone through a mass sting episode yourself? Uh, yeah, I have gone through mass sting episodes, not what I wanted. So you accidentally stung by a lot at once. Yeah, one time I was impatient and young and there was paper wasps. There was this fan palm tree way up there. Mm -hmm. It had these, these dead palm fronds down along the side. And I knew they were in there someplace. I was trying to get them out so I could catch them. It was a species I hadn't seen at that point. Were you wearing any protective cover? No, was I was wearing no- Nothing, no bee suit, just- I just had an insect net. <laughs> so I finally got frustrated and I grabbed one of the fronds and oh my God, I saw the nest there and they came out like bullets. What species was that? It's Polistes arizonensis, Arizona paper wasp. Arizona paper wasp. It's a paper little wasp guy, business. don't let it deceive you, it's yeah. a little one. We, we got some big whoppers out here, mm -hmm. but that's one of the smallest ones we have, but they are feisty, let me tell you. Mm. So in taking a quantity of stings, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but do you feel like that becomes more intense pain-wise than just a single sting from something like a bullet ant? Oh yeah, well, definitely. It's, it's kind of like the saying with fire ants, I kind of my pain scale, I have fire ants as a one. Mm -hmm. But that's a little bit misleading because I don't know anybody who's been stung by one fire ant. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. You get dozens or hundreds of them. Yeah. I learned my lesson without question, sticking my hand into a box with 200 angry yellow jackets. So I took over a hundred stings in 10 seconds. And actually after three seconds with my hand in the box, I gave up and wanted to get my hand out, but my hand got stuck. Oh. So I ended up being in there for 10 seconds. It was a huge debacle. We had to run away from the cameras. It was the worst pain experience I've ever been through. And it lasted for well over 24 hours of searing pain. Oh yeah. Would you ever put your hand into a yellow jacket box? No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say this is probably the most foolish thing I could have ever done on the Brave Wilderness channel? Well, no, you could have had giant hornets instead of yellow jackets. I guess he makes a really good point. Giant hornets are probably not something I'm ever going to do inside of box, but based on what you told us earlier, I think going to face the giant hornets in a padded armor suit might be a pretty cool experience. Yes, that, that's definitely more interesting. You go to some of those Western China ones where there's thousands in a nest, they have nests that are sometimes, you know, as round as a, card table or as big as a card table. Oh my gosh. So one question that a lot of people ask me is, Coyote, how do you take all of these stings? So they would be asking you that same question, Justin, how do you take all these stings and nothing more negative happens? Now it's possible that a body can go into anaphylactic shock if you have a major allergic reaction, but something like the bullet ants or bullet ant gloves, is that capable of killing a human? I don't think the bullet ant gloves are because they probably only get 20 or 30. 20 or 30 stings wearing the gloves. Yeah, and, okay. and the other thing that I'm not really sure about, which would be interesting to look at, is they put them the, in the gloves and how much venom have the ants already expressed 
while they're being put in this vat of mm -hmm. stupefying liquid. Right, like whatever that is, like, ah, oh, we're drunk ants Yeah, what, serum. whatever this ground up leaf stuff that they're, mm -hmm. and then they put them in these wicker things where they separate them like this, put the thing in, and then they close it up again. Right. And so you wonder how much venom is actually left. I mean, obviously there's plenty because, you know, they kind of grimace and, you know, it, it's one of those things that I don't, I don't think I would, would really want to do that. Yeah, I think you're kind of past the point of having to wear bullet ant gloves considering you have founded the Insect Sting Pain Index, but you made a really interesting point because we've gotten a little bit of criticism over the years and other people trying different stings. I mean, like, this doesn't seem to hurt as much as Coyote makes it look. And the big thing that I always point out to people about the science is that with these insects, they only have a certain amount of venom in their internal venom exactly. sac. And if you're aggravating these creatures ahead of time and they're stinging, they're actually exuding venom while doing that in that aggressive stance. So we always try to make sure we're as calm and collected with the bugs before I ever place them on me so that I would get as much of a natural full, venom full yield dose. as possible. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Do you think that there is some legitimacy behind that, that argument? Oh, absolutely. You know, the one where you can measure it more accurately is honeybees. Now, mm -hmm. they're boring, as far as I'm concerned. Probably you agree. Really get stung 60 times in the face and tell me if they're boring, because that happened to me and it was awful. Mm. What's unique about the honeybee venom, though, and you can attest to this, is that it's very potent for what it is. That's true. For, it's actually one of the more toxic venoms. Mm -hmm. And very painful. And they feel like, I say, like a, a match as you're striking a match to light a campfire or something. Yep. And the head breaks off and lands on your arm. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, fire, this kind of burning pain. Whereas many other things, like the harvester, is more of a piercing pain. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the other uh, big black ants you get in the tropics are like, I call a clean chemical pain. It's like somebody stuck a knife yeah. in you. But it, it's a clean, sharp pain, not a burning pain. And most ants don't swell. The things that swell are honeybees and wasps. Mm -hmm. I swelled up like an overcooked hot dog to the point yeah. where I actually thought my lips might explode. So getting into what I would say is probably a realistic end question for this little sit down conversation. Everybody's always saying, all right, Coyote, you clearly haven't gone into full sting retirement. Where does it end? And even when I say to myself, all right, sticking my hand into a box of yellow jackets, ah! terrible idea. I was in so much agony. Doing the harvester ants, pretty bad, not nearly as bad as the yellow jackets. But the one thing that's still out there haunting me is something that we call the terror wasp. Now this is a huge spider wasp species that we saw for the first time this past year in South Africa. Have you ever heard of large spider wasps in South Africa? I, I haven't actually seen them. Mm -hmm. I know there's huge spiders, there's these huge baboon spiders that are- Like bigger than tarantulas, right? Bigger than the tarantulas here in Arizona. And I've learned over the years that if there's a, a tarantula, it's got a tarantula hawk that preys on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's something in Africa which preys on. There are big spider wasps, I, I know that for sure. Oh yeah, we, we saw it. Actually, I did not see the one Mario saw, but Mario, as a wildlife biologist, is always going to be super accurate. He's not a tall tail kind of guy. Like, yeah, I saw, I saw a crocodile that was 27 feet long. He's like, the wasp he saw, and he actually got a little bit of footage of it on his phone. Not anything really for scale, but he said it was about the size of a sparrow. That, in my opinion, is a massive is spider wasp. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be at all surprised that it's the old saying is you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. So if you eat a, uh, a one ounce tarantula, well, you might get to be a quarter of an ounce wasp mm -hmm. because you don't efficiently digest everything. Right. A one to one, you, you lose some in the metabolism. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a three ounce, we may call it a four ounce tarantula, which mm -hmm. there are some that get that big, then you can have a one ounce wasp. It's a lot bigger than a quarter of an ounce wasp. So let me ask you this question, because I know everybody is like, Coyote, you've got to get stung by the terror wasp. What do you think? Should we find out if the terror wasp ranks on the insect sting pain index? Could it. this this could be the last one, maybe? I have to I feel like I have to pick an ending point, you know? I thought the execution wasp was gonna be it. Now there's been like stings in magnitude, but maybe the terror wasp is the grandiose pinnacle of the mountain. Well, I can always give you another one after that. Wait, what's after that? <laughs> There are these ants, not a single ant, but yeah. there's these ants in Congo that live in acacia trees. If you get underneath the acacia tree, like a giraffe or something will mm -hmm. be nibbling on the leaves, and these things rain down on you. The famous- the Ants rain down out of the tree. Yeah. This famous e ecologist, Dan Jansen, 
wrote back in the 1960s about these things. They'd land on your shoulders and they sting and they cause huge blistering and pain. And I've always thought that's a really intriguing creature. I loved it. That sounds intimidating. So basically what I'm hearing here is that you're in full support of trying out the terror wasp. Me oh yeah. Out. You're in sting retirement at this point, but maybe the terror wasp and maybe these ants are still to come on the Brave Wilderness channel. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And if you run out, I can probably give you another one or two <laughs> oh, later gosh. on. No, that doesn't help me ever enter full sting retirement. Well, Justin, thank you so much for taking all the time to talk stings with us today. You've been such an inspiration to myself and other people out there that love insects and arachnids. The work that you've done, the catalog, the experiences, your book, it's all such incredible information that you know we're trying to bring this education and excitement about these creatures to the world and we could not have done it without you. Well thank you so much for the kind lies and great things you say about me. <laughs> nevertheless I, I appreciate that and here you go. What's this? There it is. Justin's book, The Sting of the Wild. If you guys have not read this, it is a fascinating read, but do not follow the map the way that Justin and I have, because trust me, you don't want to deal with all the bites idea. and stings. But you know, Justin, for a long time, I've been calling you the godfather of stings because so many people have referred to me as the king of sting. I think it's transcended from godfather to Yoda of stings <laughs> because now you're like, all right, young grasshopper, continue on the journey and find some more painful stings. And with that, I will do my best to make you proud when it comes to my next experience in the sting zone. Justin, thank you so much. My for all pleasure. of your time today. I like Yoda. Guys, write in the comments section below and tell us, do you think I should go out and embrace the pain that comes with the terror wasp and these ants that might rain down on me from the trees? Anything's possible. I guess I'm not in sting retirement yet. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Justin Schmidt. Be brave. And be wild. We'll see you on the next adventure.